Hi everyone, this is Michael Kohler with Coral Castle Explained. In my last video, I went into depth on the pineal gland and what role it may have had in regard to the coral castle. In this video, I'm going to discuss the topic of counter-rotating fields and how this applies to the technique that Ed may have used to create his 1100 ton megalithic structure. I will begin with some information about the foremost researcher in what is called stone technology. His name is David Sereda. David Sereda is known for his research into alternative forms of healing, alternative energy, and also, as of late, his research into stone technology. David has been able to take what he calls harmonic codes and embed them into stone. The stone acts like a capacitor to hold the charge of the harmonic code. David got this idea from researcher John Hutchison, who is famous for his amazing experiments in which he will send certain frequencies of energy into objects including a cannonball, a toothbrush, or even wood, causing many of the objects to move, float, or even fly off the table. This effect, called the Hutchinson's effect, utilizes high-frequency radio waves and a Tesla coil to raise the frequency of the physical object until it begins to float. What David does is very similar as he uses Tesla coils that are specially designed based upon research in which he discovered how to mathematically calculate the naturally occurring harmonic codes from quartz crystals. By measuring each face of the six-sided crystal and dividing by the adjacent side, this result gave him the mathematical frequency for the crystal itself. These ratios, David discovered, were identical not only in shape and size to the Great Pyramid when observed from above but indicative of its location on the earth. Part of his research deviates from quartz crystals into counter-rotating fields, specifically one spinning disk of a smaller size rotating clockwise and another below it of a larger diameter rotating counterclockwise. It is this combination that produces a type of window into another source of energy, similar to the energy that is induced by the harmonic codes of the crystals when they are embedded into the stone. In both cases, whether we are dealing with crystals or counter-rotating fields, we are dealing with what are called differentials. These differentials are the mathematical ratios of the difference between the sizes of the objects. In the example with the counter-rotating fields, it is the size difference of the spinning objects and their opposing rotations which are the key to forming a gateway, if you will, to this energy. So how does this gateway differential technology apply to Ed? It actually applies in a couple different ways. First, it shows us that stone can be programmed with certain electromagnetic frequencies. And secondly, it also shows, as you will soon see, that counter-rotating fields can reduce the weight and perceived mass of an object that is actually between them. To explain this in more detail, I will default to Richard C. Hoagland. Hoagland, who is most famous for his research into the face on Mars enigma and his theory of hyperdimensional physics, clearly articulates what counter-rotational fields are on his website. In September of 1996, a Finnish physicist by the name of Dr. Eugene Podklinov at the University of Technology in Finland, while working on experiments with superconducting materials, discovered what appeared to be a slight drop in the weight of objects suspended above a rapidly spinning disk of superconducting ceramic. He tested a variety of materials and objects suspended above it. With measurable and consistent effects, he was able to get up to 2% weight loss when a second counter-rotating magnetic field was placed above the first, achieving results similar in nature to those achieved with the Hutchinson effect. 
Another experiment posted on the Cornell University website detailed an experiment that looked at counter-rotating fields. In this experiment, a pair of parallel counter-rotating vortices were spun simultaneously to determine what effect, if any at all, would occur. An unexpected observation developed when the two counter-rotating vortices began to work together in a cooperative fashion, despite the fact that they were spinning in opposite directions, causing a three-dimensional instability. These experiments seem to show that there may be a tertiary effect, some unknown energy created or allowed in our three-dimensional space by virtue of having counter-rotational fields. With all of that stated, let me summarize how all of this relates to the coral castle. First, we know that stone can act as a capacitor for an electromagnetic charge. Second, we know that stone can be programmed with specific harmonic codes or combinations of electromagnetic frequencies. And finally, we also know that the harmonic codes that are generated by measuring the differentials of quartz crystals is directly related to counter-rotating fields that create measurable weight loss for objects in between them. So how does all of this relate to Ed and his ability to levitate megalithic sized stones? In the next video, the final of this series, I will show you how all of this ties together and reveal what the missing piece of Ed's flywheel must be. Till next time.